Thanks for listening to the Thyroid Fixer podcast with your host, me, Dr. Amy Horneman, aka the Thyroid Fixer. Also, functional medicine practitioner, hormone and weight loss expert. We're talking all things thyroid, hormone, and health related in order to empower, educate, and transform you. Remember, I fix your thyroid, I fix your hormones, I fix your life. So let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Thyroid Fixer podcast. Today, I have a very, very special guest on that we just, we see eye to eye on so much, so I cannot wait to dive in and talk to her. This is Debbie Potts, so please give a warm welcome, and I will (laughs) give her official bio, and then we will just dive into conversing. So Debbie helps ambitious, high-performing individuals, who you know who you are because you're listening to this (laughs) podcast, who are trying to do all the right things get their body and vibrant self back again by getting their hands on functional lab testing to help put the missing pieces of their unique health puzzle back together again. So this is going to be a game changer for you. And you can probably hear the excitement in my voice. The latest introduction, the latest member of the family to the fixer line is metabolism fixer. And this, oh my God, I formulated this just for all my people out there that need to lose weight, that need help in the weight loss department, that can't lose weight no matter what they do, that feel like they have a slow metabolism. And it might be thinking of trying all those peptides out there, you know, the Beverly Hills soccer mom drug of choice for weight loss peptides. Or even if you're on them already and you're like, man, these are really expensive and I'm still not losing weight, add in metabolism fixer. Here's what I did. I took the power of T2, which increases your basal metabolic rate while you are sitting there watching Netflix. You're burning fat while you're watching Netflix. I combined it with a very unique patented ingredient called Suppressa. Suppressa has multiple clinical trials backing its efficacy in reducing your appetite, decreasing snacking, and providing way more control over your food intake. It is amazing. We also see improved emotional well being, just decreased food cravings all around, reduced hunger, and weight management. Add on top of that, we have green tea extract, we have purple forest purple tea extract, both of which affect the metabolism in a very positive way without the jitters of normal fat burning supplements out there from the 1980s and 90s, right? The ones that made you feel like you're having a heart attack. You will not have that in any of my supplements, thyroid fixer or metabolism fixer. But metabolism fixer, ooh, yeah, we kicked it up a notch. It is in powder form, so you can drink it through your day. It's gonna flavor your water. We got orange crush and refreshing citrus. I love them both. It is going to keep you under control all day long. So you throw a couple scoops in your water bottle in the morning, throw a scoop or two in your water bottle throughout the day. You will have fat burning and appetite control the entire day for what? An eighth of a price of the peptides? Oh my God, you can't go wrong. So grab some metabolism fixer today. Please let me know how you do on it. I am super excited for you. Super excited. Life is not a race book and the holistic method manual are two that she has written. They're out there. They're on Amazon. We're going to give you the the links to everything that we talk about today, her website, her books, her (laughs) podcasts as well. So you will be loaded down with all kinds of information. Just check the show notes for that. So Debbie is also a functional diagnostic nutritionist. She has trained under the best of the best, including my favorite, Ben Greenfield. Uh, So Debbie, welcome and just expand on that. Tell us more about you. Tell us your story. Wow, that's a like a whole show in itself. Thanks for having me on today. I'm excited to dive into these topics. But you know, my story, I've been a personal trainer. Gosh, I'm turning 50 somehow this year. So it's been since I was in college and suddenly I'm turning five zero. So it's been a long time just being in this industry, but just always been into health and nutrition since you know I was in high school and found my way going towards more 
kind of helping people the holistic method way that you have to look at being fit and healthy from the inside out doesn't just require exercising and training people as a personal trainer. You might see them one to three times a week. So it kept leading me down this pathway that I wasn't able to get people really reaching their health goals or their weight loss goals or health goals with just personal training. So I've always gone towards nutrition and then more the holistic health the past 10 years and getting different certifications and education and training with Ben. And I'm coaching for Ben part-time for him now. So it's really fun just putting this all together and became an FDN practitioner a few years ago because I really wanted to see what was going on, those hidden internal stressors with the lab tests, that functional lab tests that we can put and correlate and really investigate what's going on externally and internally to really help people thrive and feel alive every day. I love that. I love that. And you're so right because I, I think a lot of times, and I, I see it in my practice as well, you'll have someone that, like you say, they're doing all the right things, quote unquote, right things. Yeah. And they believe that dieting and restricting and killing themselves at the gym that that's right. Like that's all they have to do, right? Eat less, exercise more, but that's not <laughs> necessarily the full picture. That's not, yeah. that's not all of the right things to do. No, no. And I, I mean, I'm my story, you know, I wrote my book, life is under race because I felt like this need, I need to, it's just more therapy for me, but just share my story to help other people avoid going through what happened to me. Cause I was doing all the right thing. I was competing high level in Ironman, Hawaii and Ironman triathlons every year, doing marathons, doing 50K trail runs and all these different endurance events. And I was low carb as metabolically efficient athlete. And I was, you know, doing these morning fasted workouts, all this stuff before we really knew what it was like doing this, you know, OMAD and, and fasting. And I was just kind of doing it because I figured out things myself, but it, really doesn't work quite well if you're just doing everything too much and everything accumulates and overfills that beaker of stress and causes this metabolic chaos. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love that term too, metabolic chaos. I love that. I know that's an FDN term. I love yeah, it. Reed Davis. Love, <laughs> <laughs> love Reed. I love the term yeah. because that's that's exactly what you see. You see this chaotic state of the body where everything is starting to go awry. You know, they get numbers off. You do the, the diagnostic labs, um, functional diagnostic labs. You see thyroid off. You see hormones off. You see inflammation through the roof. So literally, like, your body is in a state of chaos. So this happened to you. I'm, I'm assuming doing all of that and crushing yourself through what is, yeah. I mean, great achievements. Amazing. I mean, you know, you're, you're a one percenter, one percent of the population can, mm -hmm. can do an Ironman and maybe less than 1%. But what happened to you? What was your story? How did that, cause it's yeah. always pain to purpose with us, right? How did that, <laughs> so true. How did that yeah. happen? How'd that unfold for you? Well, during the duration of doing Ironmans, I started in 2001 and went until 2012 before I had my breakdown in 2013. And it's more a breakdown and burnout of the body systems that happened pretty much around March 2013 when it was so obvious I had no energy. I was, you know, gained 30 pounds, I swear, overnight. And I went from the best shape of my life, winning top of my age group, racing all 2012, and then boom. 2013 turns corner and it's just this gradual decline and things, you know, like heart rate was a little higher. I wasn't able to sleep. I'd be wide awake middle of the night, that big major red flag we always hear about when you have adrenal dysfunction and HPA axis dysfunction. So everything just kind of was having problems. And I don't blame endurance athletic events and training and racing the only thing I was running my own business by myself. I'm a driven individual as I help people that are similar to me, that we're ambitious overachievers. I was trying to do everything and everything just right. And so I was burning the candle both ends, you know, getting up at 3 4 AM to check emails before I went to train clients at 5 AM. And I'd go to yoga at nighttime to relax. Uh, <laughs> but then yeah. I, you know, wasn't getting home till 7.30, 8 o'clock every night and go to bed and do it again. So I just wore myself out. So fill in the blanks. You don't have to be an athlete at all. It's nothing to do with it. I think it's more like I was trying to do everything and, and doing, you know, 
financial stress in my business every day, running my own studio, training clients, teaching classes. Yep. I was doing too much every day. So it could be, I just see it happen with everybody, you know, moms, dads, single parents, people that are single, we're just fill in the day. Yep. Something. Yep. Because we feel like we have to. And like you said, the, the, the target audience that you work with who, that's who I love to work with because I get it. I do the same yeah. thing myself, <laughs> right? I get it. I get the type A driven personality, but we do have a tendency to overdo because we feel if we're not filling every minute of the day, something mm-hmm. must be wrong. We're not doing yeah. enough. And, really and I'm easy. assuming you probably did, t- you probably did hot yoga too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was more I mean, like not Bikram yoga, but 90 degrees, hour yeah. and a half class, power yoga. And, yep. you know, just think you're doing such a good thing for yourself and you should just be at home. <laughs> I get it. Let's see. This is where we jive because I have the same, same schedule, you know, do, yeah, do your weights in the morning and then do the hot yoga at night to relax. Meanwhile, your heart rate's going to like 165 in hot yoga. You're basically doing cardio, Mm-hmm. And, but you know, that's the only type of yoga type A's can do. Yeah, exactly. So you were gaining weight and I know a lot of my listeners can, can completely relate to, to this piece of your story that you yeah. were doing all the right things, quote unquote, mm-hmm. but you were gaining weight. So what yeah. happened there? How did you figure out how to stop it, reverse it? Yeah. You know, it's been a long journey. I swear it wasn't until COVID last year that I really learned about what slowing down meant. And I'm sure the rest of the world has that same experience, but you know, it's, I was just off Ironman Hawaii in October, 2012 and did a 50k trail run and a marathon and a few other things before this, my body, just like I, in March, February, March, 2013, that's when I just was like, okay, what happened? I just was the most best shape of my life that I didn't appreciate. I was always fat in my head. <laughs> you know, you're just like, I could be leaner. I could be stronger, right. go faster. As an athlete, you're always think, you know, you could be better and you're, you're never satisfied. You know, even if you come first, you're like, I could have done this better. And so I was always hard on myself, but then there was an obvious change in my body composition when suddenly you know, it was like by that June, I had gained 30 pounds because I finally went, I was at a uh, Airbnb, we're in Coeur d'Alene and I'm like, I'm going to step on that scale. It's like, I knew I was overweight, but that was just insane. And what does that do? It causes depression because <laughs> you're like, okay, people see me as this top athlete and I'm a trainer and a health coach. And here I am looking like I just been eating ice cream all day, sitting on my butt on the sofa. And I just wanted to put a billboard sign up. Like, this isn't my fault. You know, I didn't, I was healthy. As I said, I was doing my mafetone type of lower heart rate work and doing my speed work and doing everything right. As I would tell people, but it's a whole other element. We never really address when we're coaching people back before then, I it was that whole stress thing. Stress accumulates and you have that beaker of stress and too much of it is going to cause that chaos through all your body systems. So I just didn't have just weight gain. I had all these other, a long list of things that I found out more when I started working with people to get lab tests done. And then it's like, whoa, what the heck is going on? And why? Why me? What's wrong with me? Why is everyone else fine and I get this? <laughs> right. Oh yeah. That why me is so, I I talk about that with my patients because I think you go through almost like an, it's not fair. Why me? Mm -hmm. Why can Susie Q over here not gain weight and do the same things as I'm doing? So what did you end up finding? Of course, I want to ask you about your thyroid. Did you find that your thyroid was all left up or what else was, was awry? You know, I started to work originally with, um, it was Kalish method. I, I ran in someone at my mastermind retreat that I was in. And when I knew something was wrong, I, you know, was having, we had a party at the end of the retreat and we had some wine and I was of course hadn't eaten and did my speed workout because I was low carb and I couldn't eat any of the foods. And then I was really drunk <laughs> from not having anything to eat. <laughs> and I wrote a whole chapter in my book because that was kind of the turning point. It's like, okay, I was sick for a week and Anyways, the next day after that, I ran into someone that was needing a case study client for their case study on the Kalish method. So I was like, oh my God, there's something wrong with me. Let's go. And so we did all the labs, the GI tests, and they did cortisol, your, our saliva tests back then. And 
That was, I think the only, the two main ones. And then I was getting food sensitivities and then, you know, my whole story in my book I've shared, I saw like eight different doctors trying to get the quick solution. I wanted to, yep. I wasn't ever satisfied, you know, it's like, all right, they're not helping me. They don't know what's going on. They don't understand me. Yep. Go on to the next person. So I was like, spent all this money and time and years trying to get the answer. Cause I wanted to race. I had races signed up. I signed up for that year and I, I didn't like the way I looked and way I felt and I couldn't sleep and I had no energy to do any workouts and I was just depressed. And, um, yeah, so I didn't get, no one ever did thyroid. And what's funny, I just did the organic acids test last year to find out I had, you know, candida and mold toxicity and no one ever tested that and no one ran a full thyroid panel. So I started treating, you know, the hormones and hormone imbalances first and gut dysfunction, gut dysbiosis with parasites, you know, I had blastohominis, H. pylori, yep. and then you do it again, you have something else. And so right. it was this ongoing thing and no one ever tested the molds. I was curious now, like if I knew what I know now back eight years ago, would have it been a different journey? But, you know, there's, you know, no one ever ran that. So they just look at the hormone panel and, and pathogens. So yeah. yeah, thyroid I'm sure was low. No one ever really did the full thyroid panel to know okay, what was the breakdown of it. Yeah. We'll have to do that on you. Cause now I'm just curious as to what your numbers are right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah we got to do that. We got to, we got to do that. So, so you, you kind of just touched on, you know, what, what do you know now that you mm-hmm. wish that you knew then? So in addition to the labs and kind of tying into this, you know, life is not a race book and theory yeah. and that you, you teach people expand on that. What would you wish you knew? Well, after? I think one is what I've learned from FDN that we run pretty much like five labs and, and not just do one or two labs and treat those. But I think you always have to go into working with functional nutritional therapists or functional doctor that you can't just run one lab and treat that and expect results. You have to look at the whole picture and you're really putting the pieces of the puzzle together and investigating everything. Have to. So that was huge thing. I was like, no one ever did that to me. And the big thing I keep telling people, you can't out supplement poor lifestyle habits. It doesn't work. And you can take all these supplements, but if you aren't changing your way, it's not going to work. So now as I approach things differently, when I treat people, yeah, when I'm working with them as a health coach, yeah, here's 10, 20 supplements we can put you on. But if you're not sleeping, if you're working 12 hours a day on your computer, you know, we, we need to start with lifestyle, like how you're eating, when you're eating, why, and all that, but also how do you start your day? How do you end your day? And are you moving throughout the day? I mean, there's so many lifestyle habits that are free things that we can do and work on those. And then, you know, we add in the supplements. It's not the whole thing. It's like in, in FDN, they call it the dress for health success protocol is diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplements, not just supplements. And that's what I always did. It's like, okay, I'll supplement. All right, this isn't working. <laughs> Go to the next protocol. This isn't working. I still am not losing weight. What's wrong with me? I want to race again. I want to like be lean and strong again. I, I like being fit and healthy. And so yeah, it's the big thing I, I've learned, especially this past year. What does slowing down mean? Because <laughs> we just fill in the blank, you know, all right, that didn't work. I can't raise a, I'm going to write a book or I'm going to do something else. And we just feel that same addicted to busyness. We don't know how to slow down and we feel lazy and pathetic and unsuccessful if we're not doing something. <laughs> right. Right. And I, honestly, I feel like I've been getting these messages from the universe, like in addition to what you're saying right now, that I need to slow down too, because it, it's true. It, it's like you get pulled into a vortex of perform, perform from mm-hmm. getting to the gym, to taking care of your body, to eating just that little bit better, <laughs> to eliminating something, to taking one more supplement because you heard it was really great. And it was talked about <laughs> on a different podcast. So you want to try that and you want to try the yeah. aura ring and you want to try red light therapy and you want to try. And I mean, you just biohack yourself into a grave because mm-hmm. you're trying to improve your life. But in addition, you know, in, in doing so, you're actually draining yourself, trying to do everything Mm. at one time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, I heard this good podcast the other day. It was um, 
talking about the cell phones, how we charge our cell phones Mm -hmm. at night. You have to charge them. Why don't we, what are we doing to recharge our own cells and reboot our own systems and your computer? We do alternate control delete. Now, how do you reset and reboot your system? It doesn't mean to take a bunch of supplements. It's part of the solution and we need to work on getting up, getting outside, getting a nice little morning walk or be outside for five minutes and see the sun and just look at it. And yeah. just these simple things that we can do. And that's a lot of what, you know, I call it the quality of life move we did last year. We moved from Seattle to North San Diego. I have, you know, beautiful view of Elfin Forest and Del Dio's Trail and Lake Hodges. And I can drive 25 minutes and go walk on the beach and that is what I did to change my life. And it wasn't until this past year. And I think a lot of people have this opportunity staying in lockdown and still people are not able to live their full life because of our pandemic. But it's it's really taking that time and taking it as a learning lesson. Am I living my best life? Am I being my best self? And what can I do and take an opportunity of this extra time I might have to take care of the whole me from the inside out and what lifestyle habits can I start to implement in my life that don't cost money. And it's not another gadget to biohack. It's just work right. on simple things. Simple things. Yeah. You mentioned the Goldilocks effect. So does that kind yeah. of tie into what you're saying right now about, about doing those simple things mm-hmm. or expand on what, what is the, the, the Goldilocks method, Goldilocks effect that you yeah. have? I always find that, that, one is not one size fits all for clients. And that's why I just kind of do high end packages now because I can't just fix you by just working on one thing. It's like, yes. if you're not ready to commit to working on all these things, like even triathletes, I'm not writing their schedule and not looking at everything else. So I'm just like, I'm not going to offer that anymore. I want to work on your nutrition. Yep. How are you sleeping at night? What's your sleep hygiene routine? You know, the, the exercise and the Goldilocks effect is is working on N equals one, your individual. What is too much, too little for your body mm-hmm. to off, get the benefits from it, to really optimize your health? What is the right amount of exercise? Like as I get older, I don't blame the aging process. And it's a pet peeve when people say, oh, I'm getting older. That's just the way it is. Or that's my new normal. It is not. It's adjust and course correct to right. get the right benefits. And what is the right amount, that dosage, that hormetic stressor that's going to offer you those benefits? So the Goldilocks effects to me is just like not too much, not too little, that right dose for you to be your best self ever. Yep, exactly. That That's how I work with, with my patients as well, because you can't, you cannot fix one thing. And I always say, listen, you can be on the perfect diet, the perfect cleanest, mm-hmm. whatever clean means for you or for the, whatever, <laughs> The cleanest, but if you're not treating underlying conditions, if we're not addressing inflammation, thyroid, insulin resistance, hormones, that one diet's not going to work. Now, on the other hand, we could treat you, we could get your thyroid optimized, we can use progesterone, we can use T3, we can do all that great stuff that, that your body legitimately may need. But if you're eating McDonald's and like you said, not sleeping, (laughs) not going to work. You have to do everything together. You have to. It is. And that's why I put that together last 10 years and called it the holistic method to work on the whole you from the inside out to really burn fat, to optimize health and improve your performance in sports and life. Mm -hmm. It is working on more than just exercise, more than just your nutrition, but it's it's movement throughout the day. I started last year saying meal times equals move time. You're stuck at home working all day. Get up and move. Breakfast means move. Lunch means get outside. Dinner time, <laughs> go outside, move. And right. I think we we kind of forget that part. Like athletes, especially, they'll work out in the morning, then they're sitting all day. It's like, all right, well, what can we do to input implement little movement breaks, even if it's five minutes, it just, you know, I try to get people to do some yoga at night or yin yoga, Mm -hmm. stretching people like, Oh, I can't sit there for 20, 30 minutes and hold a a stretch for three minutes. Like, okay, just start with five minutes, Right. (laughs) you know, just learn these little things and find the right amount that you can do that could just, I want to teach people sustainability. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's creating that new you, that transformation. So you're going to pick up these habits that you like, okay, this works for me. I can do this. Mm -hmm. So that's why, you know, working with a coach, we help people figure out 
the right amount. So they're not going to quit in 30 days and just go back to the old habits. Absolutely. Yeah. See, we speak the same language. I love it. I love <laughs> I it. Know. I love it. So I do want to get into, because what, what really attracted me to your podcast and, and to you and everything that you teach is, is the low carb athlete. That's the name of her podcast, low carb athlete, because I think low carb gets such a bad rap. And in, you know, you hear a lot of naysayers saying, well, you can't be an athlete and do low carb. You can't do low carb if you have a thyroid problem. You, and it's just simply not true. So I'd like to get into that and get Mm -hmm. your philosophy and your experience being a low carb athlete. And what does the research say about it? Let's, let's negate the naysayers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it depends what sport you're going on and I'm doing more endurance sports, short distance sports, you know, you're going to be burning different energy systems. So when we're doing a marathon, half marathon even, or something longer than two hours, you're going to be burning. Ideally, you want to be burning more fat as your main fuel source. Because you look at Volok and Finney metabolic efficiency book years ago, there's all this information. There's a faster study, which is done in men, not women. So, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt. And again, the Goldilocks effect, figure out how many carbs does your body need to keep fueled up. But a lot of athletes, we want to be endurance athletes, be burning fats our main fuel tank. So you think you have 40,000 calories or we have 2000 calories of stored fuel, which energy tank you want to be going for the slow burning logs or the kindling. So a metabolic efficiency instructor specialist, you look at training people. And ideally back in the day, I was able to test people in a treadmill with new leaf metabolic testing cart and right. test people where the respiratory quotient is, where are you burning most fat and where do you switch to burning carbohydrates? So it was so fascinating to watch people on a treadmill and look at their heart rate and look at their fuel source and then teach people how to be burning fat based on how they're training, but how they're eating. Because if you're going to three hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, <laughs> you're going to be in a lot of pain and suffering if you're carb burning, because you're going to have to keep replacing that fuel. So it's, it's just like, why do you have GI stress and have all these problems? Cause you're taking on all this sugar. Yeah. So to me, it's like, no brainer. You should be burning fat and teach people how to be fat adapted athletes by training them and how they eat, but then all the lifestyle habits. Cause I think it's important part of that journey to be a fat burning athlete or else you're going to be taking in the goo and the Gatorade and all the cliff bars and all that stuff. That's just going to make you throwing up or going out the other end on the race course and after. Right. So that's for the endurance and you're right. Mm -hmm. you hear so many endurance athletes, marathon runners, um, triathletes, they're talking about the goo and, you know, banana and goo and, and they carb load the night before and all of that. So that for endurance athletes Mm -hmm. have, have kind of been pushed out the window. Now, what about the, we'll say the average athlete? I know there are body, there are pro bodybuilders, fitness figure competitors that compete in a ketogenic state, they, yeah. they train keto savage. Yeah. Day. Yeah. Danny Vega and all those, that gang, they all are do more carnivore and that, you know, it makes sense to me too. It's like your body's, <laughs> your muscles don't make, aren't made by carbohydrates. They're right. made by a protein amino acid. So it is for the like CrossFitters for the, yeah. you know, Spartan racing and all that. I think, you know, you can add in, and even for endurance athletes, we call it carb timing and figure out where to place those carbs so it doesn't spike your blood sugar. Those people that are doing shorter distance events, higher heart rate above your fat burning range, they will need to replace those carbohydrates and some fuel. So I think carbs get the tagged as a bad enemy. And that even like my friend Stephanie Holbrook does keto endurance podcasts and coaching keto endurance athletes, but it's the same. It's just, you know, saying that, I think people think keto, you get in carnivore, I think all carbs are bad and it's just crappy carbs, a carbage we're getting rid of. We're just trying to replace it with good source of carbs when you need it. And so I think, you know, adding in them, if it's some sweet potatoes with some butter or, you know, having a 
superfood shake that's little you can put some fruit in it and i mean there's different things you can do we're just not eating all the gels and the bars that are high carbs they have some carbs but we're not eliminating it to zero carbohydrates and i think that goes back to goldilocks effect how much you have to experiment n equals one okay let's try this did you did you feel better did your workout you have more energy so because some people do if i have a little carbs before a workout i can lift heavier or I can perform faster and stronger. So I think it's, you know, I think I tried, and I've said this my show last year that I was fasting a lot of my workouts thinking, oh, I can't eat anything at all. Yeah. yeah. And I know people brag about it like, oh, I rode my bike a hundred miles and I had just some MCT oil or some ketone esters. I'm like, well, could have you gone faster <laughs> if you ate something, you know, it's just that fine line of when we think, you know, we're superhuman and we start to think, okay, I'm just a super athlete because I didn't eat anything for all my workouts when, all right, could have you been even better if you just did a little bit or try something different? Yeah. And it might take trial and error. It might take, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I think that I am better in a fasted state. I think I work out better in a fasted state, but it has to be trial and error. You have to try mm-hmm. to eat different things. And maybe you have a crap workout one time because whatever that you did didn't work. Maybe fasting didn't work. Maybe eating carbs before your workout didn't work and you have to go back, Mm -hmm. but you don't know until you try. Yeah. And and I heard that, that episode where you were talking about fasting and I completely agree. You said, um, I think this is where you tied in the women are not small men. Yeah. That's what I was just going to say. If you look at Dr. Stacey Sims and then Dr. Mindy Pelez is talking a lot about women and fasting and trying to combine that information for women and athletes that going by your menstrual cycle, those that are still mm-hmm. menstruating and how to time your carbs and your workouts. And there's actually an app. I was trying to investigate this myself. And then there's a new app they're beta testing now to log all that in that's through Dr. Stacey Sims and I forget her name. She's out of the UK and it's called wild.ai, I think it is. And they're, so they're trying to have an app because Dr. Mindy and I were talking about this, like, wouldn't it be cool to have like your training peaks where we input our workouts and then have it track your menstrual cycle and then your food. So you can kind of figure out, I can go higher carbs the week before my cycle starts. And then you can go low carb, be more like a man the week of your cycle. And then when your estrogen surge, you need to add in, a little bit and they can go down and we're progesterone the week before it's like, I mean, it's, it gets complicated if you really, but you can individualize it so much. But I think for female athletes, we can take a little bit more. We have to make sure that we're, our bodies are designed to reproduce that we're not adding too much stress. And I think that's with a fine line of a woman versus a man when they're training, doing this endurance work and being a low carb athlete that we have to not think I have to be zero carbs and we can adjust them based on your monthly cycle. Mm -hmm. And and getting in tune with your body too, because I've I've talked to a couple of different people. um, uh, Jenny Hulbert, she does the Mm -hmm. wild wellness podcast and she talks about working out in tune with your cycle Mm -hmm. and, and timing your workouts too. And I don't do that so much, but in terms of the fasting and carb intake, just really listening to your body. Like even yesterday, I was starving all day. Like it felt like yeah. my stomach was a black hole. Anything that I <laughs> ate, it just, I, I was still hungry, still <laughs> hungry. And it wasn't my sleep and it wasn't my glucose. It was, and I actually stopped and I thought, what part of my cycle am I in? Because that has to be having something to do with it because that my hunger is increased. And I listened to my body. I didn't try to mm-hmm. deprive it. It was not a fasting day. I always say fast intuitively. If you wake up hungry, not a day to fast. So yeah. I think just getting in tune with your body too, especially as an athlete, athletes are just more in tune with their bodies anyways, in general, mm-hmm. and just listening to it. And don't yeah. force a fast if you're hungry. Would you agree with that? I so agree. So I, I'm smiling because I just found that that intu- that's what I've said for a while. And I figured this out for myself. Like if you have that intuitive eating and fasting, like I didn't know I was doing OMAD. I didn't know I was doing fasted workouts. It's just, I didn't want to eat. And, and so I think it's respecting that those times, like you said, my body was hungry. I need to eat because I started to think this past few years, like, am I fasting too much? Cause 
before COVID when I was training clients and I was doing all sorts of things. I wouldn't eat on Wednesdays until I got home around 3.30. So I went from, you know, morning, I think I was lifting weights Wednesday mornings. I'd go run with the client for an hour, run, walk, and then I'd swim masters at noon. And then I had a couple clients and we got home. And then I was eating. Finally, I'm like, am I actually <laughs> doing more harm than good? That doesn't really sound good. When you're exercising throughout the day more than once, maybe it's not such a good idea to do such prolonged fasting. I think it's good if you aren't doing much activity that day and, and match those fasting days too when you're less active. But I think it's is paying attention. Like, am I causing more stress in my body? I don't know if this is really beneficial to have this cell autophagy happen right now when my body's probably thinking, oh, I'm being chased by a lion. I better cool down and recover and <laughs> reset. Right. But intuitive yeah. is a huge part of it. It's so big. And I know for for your people, for my people, the type A drivers, again, and, and then add athlete on top of that or it's add <laughs> entrepreneur on top of that, mm-hmm. right? We get it set in our mind. Like today I'm going to do OMAD. And it doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't because today I said it that I was going to do OMAD. So therefore I am going to accomplish my goal. And that's where it works against us. Because I, I went mm-hmm. through that. You know, I had a period of time too, probably a couple of years ago that I was doing one meal a day. For those who don't know what OMAD is, one meal a day and this isn't you know reducing your calories you eat a lot of calories in that one meal and a lot of nutrients in that one meal but i was doing that like two three times a week and you know what wasn't good for me it didn't eh. mm-hmm. thrown it in once in a while fine but i was too almost like hyper focused vigilant obsessed and i think a lot yeah. of people <laughs> your listeners my listeners can get into that obsessive mode of like well, this was my goal and I have to, and I said it that I was going to. And so therefore I have to, regardless of what their body is telling them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, We don't want to break the rules because that's like, I set this goal up. I'm not going to, even my body's like, oh, I need to eat. And that's not, I'm feeling like crap. Even I was realizing like, okay, I'm doing all this, but I'm not losing weight. If you're doing all this fasting, I mean, what's the point? Unless you're trying to do cell autophagy and you have some inflammation, which we all do. So that's good periodically. But if you're doing this every day, is it really, and nothing's really changing for what, if you're trying to lose some fat weight, you might want to look the other direction and look at what stress do you have in your life? Right. It's big. Exactly. Well, I just going to add in, there's a NutriSense you know, the continuous glucose monitors, I was reading posts yesterday in there and some people had questions about how they didn't change what they ate, but their blood sugar went really high, but it was a stressful day and they're like a doctor or they were working in the ER. And as I added in, it was really interesting because it was like people are correlating, being able to track their glucose 24 seven with a continuous glucose monitor that they could see what impact of the glucose? Um, and I just love, I love how this conversation is kind of going just all over because we have so much to talk about. It's just flowing. So oh, the no. title of this will be like, like a Ben Greenfield podcast. It'll be like multitude of, <laughs> of topics for everybody to click on. But no, CGMs, I think, I mean, what are your thoughts? I, I love how they give feedback. Like you said, if you're mm-hmm. under a lot of stress and you have high glucose and you haven't even eaten, but could they be a little bit, could they feed into that like, Again, that obsessed, hypervigilant, you're always looking at the number because you're type A. Well, that goes with the aura ring too. You know, I'm coaching VIP clients is called in our Ben Greenfield coaching program where people are wearing NutriSense, they're doing their aura ring or root band. I'm doing their training peaks. You know, I'm looking at their HRV, their sleep scores, all this data and trying to, you know, use that information, help them optimize their health. But it's funny that it's just, I think a lot of people get all this, all these devices and get all this feedback, but they don't really know what to do with it. Or they, you know, they look at it, but they don't apply that. It's like, all right, if your HRV score is down in the tank, what are you going to do about it? If your blood sugar is going up and down, are you changing anything about it? So it's actually taking action on collecting all these clues to your stressors, your external stressors and internal, and then doing something about it. I think a lot of people just get it like, oh, okay, <laughs> I got this. It's like yeah. taking their steps today, but they don't really know what to do with that information. Right. 
Right. Exactly. I do want an aura ring though. That's on my, that's on my list. I actually had it in the cart and I just haven't checked out yet, but that's because you know what? It's almost like denial. It's like, I feel Mm. good right now. I don't want to know that I'm not doing something right. <laughs> but yeah. I didn't want to get an aura ring, doesn't look. Yeah, we got ours for Valentine's Day. And so now it's almost, you know, competition now. Who can get the better sleep score? <laughs> so it, I've always been really serious about my sleep, especially when you have adrenal fatigue, air quotes on that, because it's HPA axis dysfunction. Yeah. Just that metabolic chaos that you can't sleep. And so when you have had that horrible wide awake two in the morning, every night, you, you're, you know, was it tired, but wired and you're just sleep is so screwed up when you get past that, you don't ever want to go back. And I do everything I can, whatever, you know, taking some supplements, doing some yoga at night, doing my, you know, blue blockers at nighttime, yep. just all this whole sleep hygiene routine is priority. And then getting the data from the aura ring, say, okay, how much deep sleep did I have? How much REM sleep? And when it goes in the tank, if I work out at night, horrible night's sleep. And so you learn about yourself and how to really get your best sleep score. And then the readiness score, should I change my workout? Which I don't really, I, it's kind of automatic to me if my legs feel awful or if I feel tired, I'm not going to be able to run anyways. <laughs> so it's usually kind of correlates with the data on my aura ring, but it is a super fun investment to make for your health to really figure out, are you, all these things are you doing? Are they actually helping you? Are they, right. are they benefiting you? So it's, you know, to get that data is fun. That is kind of fun. Yeah. Just to see if, yeah, what you're doing is actually working. That's a, yeah. yeah. So before I let you go, I want you to give the the common red flags that we're doing too much. So when people are listening to this and they're going, they're nodding their head, they're going, yep, yep. Okay. That's <laughs> me. That's me. That's me. Now what, like what, what are those big red flags where we can say you are doing too much because of this? Well, the obvious ones, as I said, that, you know, you're gaining Fire weight required. for gaining weight. You don't know why. I mean, yep. there's obviously things going on and stuff going on in your gut. So looking under the hood, I think would be yep. first step investigating what's actually going on. The sleep is, you know, big one. Obviously I said, waking up at the two, three in the morning, you can't sleep. You're wide awake and you, you have trouble falling asleep or when you wake up, you're tired. So all the things about the sleep wake cycle are big red flags you know, hunger wise, just getting headaches from food. I got all these weird food sensitivities and you really, you know, an apple and almond butter I used to eat, but then suddenly I would get a headache. And so all these things that paying attention to how food makes you feel, does it make you feel bloated or gassy or headache or cranky, you know, looking at what your body's doing with food, because that will change. And that will be a lot of big, I think, red flags that you have some under, under the hood, some symptoms going on of gut inflammation, leaky gut. So that's going to be caused by stress, being sick all the time, you know, stress is on immune systems off blood sugar dysregulation. So said, you know, any, every stress response is a blood sugar response. So if you're going to be freaking out and running from that lion, your blood glucose levels will go up. So body composition would be the last one too, is if I'm working out and suddenly I'm losing muscle and I'm gaining fat weight. Why? (laughs) So there's like some main ones I think of that happened to me. Yep. That's beautiful. I just wanted to put it all in one little package with a bow because we talked about so much. (laughs) So just kind of summarizing like that, putting it all together where people can listen to that list and go, Okay, I have three out of the five. I better do <laughs> something about this. That's yeah. perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the big thing of what it, my eight elements holistic method. There's I moved last year and just last year, I think being happy and a big thing I realized the past years, I didn't know I wasn't not happy until I moved here and change my whole life schedule. So sometimes you have to do something not as dramatic as moving to, out of state, but I think maybe rescheduling your whole schedule and like my job is different. And I think finding what makes you happy is so essential to health. If you're doing all this stuff and you still like, what is wrong? What's missing? You know, simple thing is writing a gratitude journal, making more time to play and laugh. I think for years, I think a lot of us are type A driven individuals. We don't know how to just be goofy and silly. And we're just so serious and uptight and, 
you know, round tightly that you don't know how to put your guard down and just chill. And I finally was like, you know, I go swing. We have a swing in our new yard. <laughs> I go sit on the swing and I, we play games and, you know, you have to let loose and find something that brings you joy and happiness. I think it's so essential to health. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. That is perfect way to end happiness. <laughs> I mean, that's so true. Everything that you mm-hmm. said, I couldn't have said it better. That's just on point. Absolutely. Great. Maybe it does take moving to a different state. I don't know. Life is too short. If you got to move, move. You know? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So well said. Yes. So Debbie, tell people how they can find you. Like I said, we'll have everything, all of your links in the show notes, definitely your podcast. And you are giving away a free ebook that's on your website as well. So I'll, I'll give you the, the mic here. Tell people how they can find you. Well, debbiepotts.net is the website. So easy. And then the podcast is called the low carb athlete podcast. So I, it's more about health building. I don't talk necessarily just for athletes. I think, you know, we've had it for 10 years. It used to be called fit, fat, fast. We had a hundred episodes and how to eat for fat to burn fat metabolic efficiency. So we've done that for years, but now it's more like burn fat by learning what's going on and in, inside and out. Mm-hmm. So that's that. And it, social media too, low carb athlete, Instagram, Facebook, and going back to less is more. Uh, I just, you know, all the clubhouse and the, whatever other videos that's like too much for me. If we want to know how to manage your stress, don't try to do all the social media things and do too much in life on the computers. True. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Very well said. And they can find the ebook on your website too as well. Yeah. (laughs) Ebook on the website, debbiepotts.net. You can look under their free gift when you log in there. So it's right there. Lots of free stuff. I wrote a lot last year as I had more free time. So I did a lot of writing and new eBooks. So you can always grab stuff there. That's great resource. Perfect. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Debbie, so, so much for your time and your wisdom. This has just been a great all around conversation. We touched (laughs) on so much that this is going to appeal to everybody. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for your time. And we'll definitely have you back on. Good. Thanks for talking. That was fun. Good way to start the day. Absolutely.